Thank each of you who've been very patient with our technical difficulties today because there have been many. And this is why you need a tech crew. <laughs> but this too shall pass. Amen. I'm so excited. Amen. I'm so excited because on this day, uh, to see a brother in Christ, to step up and to do what thus say the Lord. And not only to just be willing to be to step up, to but to be able to work through all of the mental dynamics that it takes to do what thus say the Lord. You see, it's easy to preach. That's not that's that's not hard to do. What's difficult, though, is to work through some of the life dynamics. That's why in this ministry, I encourage you listeners there. I don't care if you're in prison. I don't care if you're in the nursing home. I say it over and over and over again because it's true. I don't care where you find yourself right now. There is something that God has put in you and that he is asking and trusting that you are going to partner with him, commune with him, sup with him that he can level the playing field and give you a brand new start, a fresh start. And that is one of the reasons why taking and participating in communion is so vital. As Minister Rice ministered unto our souls today, it doesn't matter about yesterday. We've got to get to a point where we say, this is the day. Once we recognize that this is the day, then it doesn't matter about our yesterday. When we come to the word of God and we read the word of God, the Bible is real clear. It's only interpreted by way of the Holy Ghost. Otherwise, we're just reading some words that, are, that have been paired together. That's why in different religious sects, people can be righteous in their approach or they can be religious in their approach but their effectiveness isn't there they lack the power of the holy spirit i'm so excited today because i can guarantee you one thing for sure jesus is with us right now I can guarantee you one thing. I may not be smart enough to know too much more than this. But wherever you sit right now, wherever you lay right now, wherever you're listening right now, Jesus is with us right now. Hallelujah. 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 Such a wretch as me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, I can't tell your story and you can't tell mine. I can't tell you your journey and you sure can't tell me mine. You see, some of my life journey, I wouldn't wish on any of you. And likewise, some of y'all life journeys, better you than me. To God be the glory. I want to share a little bit of the word of God today and I'm excited because I remember years ago talking to one of the most anointed men of God I've ever met in my life, Elder Jones, in Wilmington, Ohio. And we were talking about the word of God. And he said, son, let me tell you something. The word of God is the word of God, not yours. <laughs> I said, well, well, okay, Elder, I really wasn't talking about anything. What are you talking about? And he said, son, the word of God is the word of God, not yours. And he said, you can read God's word. But based on where you are in your faith and sometimes your level of understanding depends upon how that word is received in you and then how we make it deliverable to others. See, that's why it's so important that we pray and we seek the will of God in our lives. 
because he can take people that have major degrees in education and totally make them confound it when it comes to the principles of this gospel. He can take an uneducated man that may not be able to tell you the principles of a basic algebraic concept. But that joker can sit you down and he can go through those, he or she, my bad, could go through the 66 books and teach you to where you wouldn't even want to take a nap. But you see, it's not until the Holy Spirit is invited in. It's not until we get things right with God that we can actually level the playing field. That's why when he says, let them who have ears hear, he's not saying that your ear has been chopped off. He's saying that you can't hear me spiritually because you have a lot of plaque, spiritual plaque in the way. It's time to turn it up, people of faith. It's time as we, as I talk with Elder and he would remind me of scripture over and over and over and over. Many times he would talk about the same scripture over and over and over. And I would say, Elder, can we get past John 3.16 for God so loved the world? My God, Elder, I know he loved us. And he would look at me and he would say, son. The word of God is God's, not yours. And, and I walked around for months wondering, what in the world is this old dude talking about? I mean, who says the word of God is the word of God? I mean, who has to even hear that? But it was that part on the end that months later began to minister to me when he said, it's not yours. You see, as we approach the word of God, we approach the word of God from our experiences and from our perspective. We approach the word of God as if the word of God has to intimately design itself around where I sit in my own personal dynamic. I want to share with you the word of God is the word of God. It's not yours. We've got to allow the spirit of Christ to come. And that's why in Acts 2.38, repent. Every one of you for the remission of your sins. Hallelujah. As a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, get me, get me Acts 238. I'm asking my wife because I'm still recuperating from eye surgery. And so I don't have the glasses yet so I can see. <laughs> That's amazing. I have surgery, but I need glasses to see. And I want her to read this. Just that's fine. Speak it that they can hear it, please. Acts two thirty eight. Then Peter said unto them. Then Peter said unto them. Repent. Repent. Now, before Minister Rice went into the the Holy Communion process, he first opened the window of opportunity for you to do what? To repent. You see, you can know the word of God, but we take the word of God and we wear it the way we want it to wear. If I need a black coat, guess what the word of God becomes? A black coat. If I need a blue skirt, guess what the word of God all of a sudden miraculously out of nowhere becomes? It becomes a blue skirt. If I want nail polish on, guess what the word of God becomes? It becomes my favorite nail polish. The word of God is the word of God. It's not yours. It's not mine. It is his. Faith cometh by hearing. Hearing of the word of God. How can a man hear? Lest a preacher be sent. 
Not that you're perfect, not that you are some supercalifragilisticexpialidocious human being, but it's through the release by way of the anointing of the Holy Ghost that you can rightly divide the word of truth, that you can depart hope and life into others. That is why it's so important that we forsake not the assembly of ourselves together, people of great faith. When the doors of the church open, well, when, during COVID times, the doors may not open. You, you might have to just be in your bathroom or in your kitchen by yourself, but that's still the doors of the Lord because that's the best you can get at that time. But when that opportunity presents itself, you got to be the first there. You got to rush there. So he says in Acts 2.38. Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. Now, listen to the process. He tells us to repent and then he tells us why. That's why the Bible says in all thy getting, get understanding. So often you've been sitting on your gifts, you've been sitting on your anointing, you've been sitting on your talents because you don't even understand what to do, why to do, how to do, or what you're supposed to do when you do get it. God is calling us now to action, not to go rally up and down the street corner, beating up people, throwing bricks and windows. No, our fight is on our knees. Amen. But don't get it twisted. Shortcake. God's word is God's word. It's unchanging. It gives us life. It gives us direction. It gives us hope and it gives us an answer. Can somebody say thank you, Lord, for an answer? Thank you, Lord. Somebody watching right now, you're looking, you're, you're wanting to see an answer. You need to hear from God. You want God to come down from heaven on a parachute. Land straight on your forehead so you can blast it all over social media and say, look, Jesus came to visit me, bust me straight in my head. Now I know exactly what God is talking about. No, just some man flew out of the sky and fell on top of you. God's word is God's word, not mine. Jesus, throughout the 66 books, gives us instructions. He says, repent, every one of you. See, he knows that the believers of faith have gotten off track. When you were asked to repent, did some of you look to somebody else as the problem? Or did some of you finally say, wow. <laughs> I'm part of my own problem. Lord, forgive me. I repent of that. But you see, repenting alone isn't enough. You've got to understand why it's so important that you repent. My son and I were in a car the other day. And my son was going a little bit faster than I desire in my car. So I told my son, pull over. I said, son, slow the car down. Son, slow the car down. Son, slow the car down. Well, I'm trying to... Son, slow my car down. Now, before he could open his mouth that fourth time, I said, pull over. You're not going to drive anything with my name on it. He went to the back seat. Before he got out of the car, I said, son, what's missing here? And he said, um, I don't know, I'm sorry. And I said, exactly. If you drive someone else's stuff, it's kind of a no brainer. If they want you to drive it a certain way, not saying you're driving bad, but follow the protocol. And then when you realize that you yourself have made it worse than it needed to be, 
take full ownership of it and just repent and then understand why it's so important that you repent. Without a repentant heart, it's easy for us believers to become Pharaoh. You know how I can tell that's the truth for many of us? Some of you listening, some of you watching right now, you're so angry at somebody and you can't even remember what the argument was about. Oh, you remember there was an argument, but you don't even have all the facts straight anymore. It's been so long ago, you can't even regurgitate the real story. Whereas when we go to God and we say, Lord, here I am, the wretch that I am, Father, according to your word, Acts 2.38 tells us what, Sister Kirsten? It says, repent and be baptized. Repent. Then he says, be baptized. Watch this. Every one of you in the name of Jesus. I don't want anybody left out. I don't want you thinking more highly of yourself than you ought to. I want you to be lowly in thought. I want you to be meek. I want you to be humble. Humility is the sign of a broken man. Humility is the beginning. It's the cornerstone to be launched into whatever God has for you. See, you are out there breaking laws or breaking hearts. You are walking out unaccountability. You can even tell the stories. I know I can. But God gives us a prescription. And when we start with him, he starts with us, but he starts on the inside of you. You see, it's time to turn it up. What do you need to turn up today, people of faith? What did you what do you have inside of you that's laying dormant? What ministry do you know beyond a shadow of a doubt? All you have to do, like Minister Rice, not worry about being at the hospital all night, not worrying about all of your business stuff you've got going on. Not worrying about the weight of the world and all the responsibilities that come upon you. But just to say, yea, Lord, here I am I, the wretch that I am. Use me, Lord. I am repenting right now. And as he said, as he popped that bread in half, pop. He said something came over him. The Bible says, let them that have eyes see. He's not talking about your four or eight eyes. Those of us that have bifocals. He's not talking about the lenses. He's talking about your spiritual lens. He's saying the same things that are in front of you, they've been in front of you. The same challenges that have been there have been there. The same call on your life has been there. I've called you out of your mother's womb for such a time as this. But how many of you are going to take the lead like Nick and Chris Taylor, who in the midst of a blazing thunder, thunderstorm would walk just to come into the room, would walk just to be in the presence? How many of you like Minister Rice? Behind the scene can get jumped on and challenged <laughs> Challenge some more. And then just decide, this is the day. This is the day. This is the day. In spite of yesterday. In spite of everything in front of me. In spite of the journey. In spite of my shortcomings. In spite of myself. This is the day the Lord has made. He's called me for such a time as this. And to actually show up. Oh, God is real today. God is real today. Is he real in you? Are we so hung up on religious 
protocols that we can't be used by the kingdom of God. I believe the word of God should be kept so practical that it becomes applicable. And that's what Minister Rice walked out before us today. See, it's not about what you know. Oh man, I tell you, I get sick and tired of going to clergy meetings and boy, everybody know the word of God. Everybody's so important. Everybody's got a bit of big cheese. Yada, da, 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 da. That doesn't move me. What moves me is when I can see you allow God to move you. And I can see the word of God being walked out. That blesses me. But as we witness today by Minister Rice, if you'll just show up, God will show out. Can somebody say they were blessed today? Can somebody just really in your spirit, just really admit, I was blessed today. Now, what if Minister Rice had been too tired? What if Minister Rice had to go get a dog? What if Minister Rice had to take somebody down to Kentucky at 10 o'clock? Knowing service started at 11 o'clock. What if, what if, what if? Have you not had enough what ifs in your own life, people of faith? I know I have. Them what ifs have stopped me from doing what thus say the Lord every time out. I wasn't able to be the most faithful husband because of them what ifs. I wasn't able to be the best father because of them what ifs. Wasn't able to show up for church all the time when I needed to because of them what ifs. I tell people all the time, when I grew up, I went to church for two reasons. The sweet potato pie and them doggone pretty girls. It wasn't my fault. May Ethel and them was cooking them sweet potato pies and putting a piece of heaven in them. I couldn't help myself. And the pastor's daughters, oh my God, I don't know why he let them come to church with that long, pretty, curly hair. It wasn't my fault. It was them what ifs. But God had a call. He had a purpose. I thought I was supposed to be a world-class athlete. I thought I was supposed to be a world champion dominating sports all over the world. I might be able to coach somebody to do it, but that wasn't my call. How many of you are doing things, and you might be the best at it? You might be the best bank robber known to man. You might look, you might make Bonnie and Clyde look stupid. Might make Al Capone look like a rookie. But is that who God has called you to be? I bless the Lord today. I bless God for taking just one nugget of his word today. And planting that word so far in the pit of our souls that it take root today. And that it begin to manifest itself through our earthly vessels. That all those watching can see the God in me and the God in you. I want to thank God for each and every one of you who chose to participate in our service today, whether it be by social media or whether it be by, by telephone communications. I thank God because this is the day that the Lord has made. In spite of it all, let us rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. We're so excited because we're due to move into a new location on next Sunday. And I'm so proud to announce that we are not. <laughs> I've been toiling over this and I've been calling folks, asking for input. And, you know, I survey folks anytime I come to a road, a roadblock or, or impasse in a road, I survey folks and I say, well, what's going on? Jesus, talk to me. 
And in the midst of all that, <laughs> I just heard, you got common sense, use it. I have not been to my surgeon for clearance for my appointments. <laughs> I don't walk in fear of COVID, you, another man, or a bear. I just don't. In fact, I think the biggest bear sometimes is me. I got to ask God to humble me sometimes, chill. You put me on a, a block of ice sometimes. We are moving into our new facility, but it's not going to be next Sunday. I want you to continue to pray for this ministry. I want you to continue to join and partner with this ministry. We're going to allow God to come in and to really... Um, bless us um, and prepare us for such a time. And so with that, um, next week, I uh, hold on one second, please. Brother Collins. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, sir. You are in our live service. Are you in the hospital? Yes. I want you to speak from your heart, brother. Uncensored, unrehearsed. No idea this was going to happen. I didn't know you were going to call me during service, and you didn't know I was going to put you on the spot. So, able body yeah, minister, I want you to. I, I, I was calling you because I, I needed your help. I needed advice. Okay. <laughs> to God be the glory. Hallelujah. See how he just walked out, Minister Rice, just now before us? He's got his own journey. He, heavens, this brother is laid up in the hospital preparing for a major surgery tomorrow. And now, because God has called him before the beginning of the foundation of this earth, he's going to take about 30 seconds and bless us around the world. Because he knows he is the absolute best that God has to offer. Brother Collins, bless us for just a moment. I, I mean, I don't, I don't know what you want from it. This is kind of weird. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah! In other words, people of faith watching all over the world, Brother Collins is saying, wow! Well, when I do call the pastor, I'm calling to receive. Now, this old juicy fruit pastor is telling me to feed him. I need a burger. You asking me for one. But he won't put more on you than you can bear. So God had you call this crazy juicy fruit pastor knowing that if you crazy enough to dial me in the middle of service, you must be hearing from heaven. You must be anointed. You got to have the calling in the mantle of Jesus upon you. Hallelujah. You see, this is what we were talking about, Brother Collins. On that day, God knew what he was setting in motion in you. And look what God did. God said, Brother Collins, gotcha. Bless us, brother. <laughs> Let us start. Tell the people where you are. Tell the people where you are right now. Tell them where you are right now. And he is calling the man of God for comfort, but for wisdom. How many times in our lives we choose to do things a different way. But when God opens our spiritual eye, we begin to turn and do things differently. Brother Collins, I thank you for ministering hope into somebody listening. It might be somebody in prison right now. It might be somebody that's trying to get their children back right now. It might be somebody in a hospital bed. It might be the person laying next to you where you lay right now. And because you called and because you just spoke, God can do the rest. Let the church say amen. amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
I want to thank you, Brother Collins. And, and as soon as this live broadcast is over, I give you my word. I will be calling. You will be the first call that I make. Amen. And Amen. I thank God for you, brother. Just tell the people how much you love the Lord. Just real quick. Just give me a little. Just give me a little bit. Hallelujah. Y'all, I think we've been set up today. First, we were set up for Minister Rice. Then we were set up from Brother Collins. Oh, my God, I don't think I can take much more. See, they already had an idea of what today was going to be like. And God said, I know, but I need you. You see, I gave you something. Because somebody's laying in a hospital bed right now. Somebody like Minister Rice has such a horrific schedule. Can't see the forest for the trees. Every every second counts. And God says, psst, psst. Come over here, shortcake. Psst. Sister Orso, come over here, shortcake. Sister Riddle, psst. Come over here. Come over here. Pastor James, psst. I need you today. <laughs> Hallelujah. Uh, Brother Collins, we're going to close our service now, but I promise you that I will be calling you. I thank God for you, my brother. I thank God for you. And um, we will be talking soon. Thank you for participating in this live service. And all of those that are listening right now, I want to encourage you right now that you are the absolute best that God has to offer. You really are. And no weapon formed against you shall prosper. So with that being said, I love you in Christ. Brother Collins, I'm going to ask that you disconnect the line and I will call you back so that I can stay with our live broadcast and those that are on the line listening in. God bless you, brother. Okay, are we back together? Are those others still on the line with me? Bless the Lord. This has been a glorious day, people of faith. I want to encourage you. Let God challenge you to be the best that he's called you to be. And I don't know if I can handle much more of this. Is this... One of my spiritual sons, Christopher Taylor, on the line. Yeah. <laughs> well, Chris, you're live on the line. Hello, everybody. Hello. Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> I knew I tried to win getting to you. <laughs> <laughs> well, Chris, we don't have much time, but I want to give you an, just a few seconds. This wasn't prescripted. But I want to give you a few seconds to bless the people of God. Just real short, real brief, please. Hello? I'm, we're waiting on you. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay, so I, I was going to read uh, 10 minutes, 5, but uh, if, if I only got a few questions. Or a few seconds, I mean. Hang on, it's excellent. I'm going to turn it down. While, while Brother Chris is, is finding his way, I'm so encouraged because some of you have a ministry. You just don't have a home for that ministry. I want to welcome you into the Kingdom Builder family. Where we will embrace your ministry. We will embrace what God has for you. It's not just about me and my wife or what we're about. It's really about the ministry being birthed in you. And so I encourage you to partner with this ministry. Become faithful to this ministry in all your ways. Help us to build this program that we can really reach those that God has already called before the beginning of the foundation of this earth was even formed. We're not the only called people here. I want to speak life into all of you watching right now, all of you listening right now. 
come and be a part of us. You can reach me directly for prayer, consultation, partnership, or just a brother in Christ to agree with. You can reach me by email at pastorsunnyjames at gmail.com. That's P-A-S-T-O-R. Uh, Sunny is, I can't even remember my name, S-O-N-N-Y, J-A-M-E-S, at gmail.com. Pastor Sonny James at gmail.com. Or you can call me directly on my personal cell phone anywhere in the country. You can call me out of the country too, but make sure you put some quarters in that before you make that call. <laughs> my direct cell number is area code 513-487-487. 8843. I would love to partner with you. I would love to embrace what God is doing for you and what God is calling you to do. Reach out to us. Also be a faith partner. Help us secure our new location that's coming up here. And go to your cash app and we have a fundraising tool there. And it's on the cash app. It's the dollar sign launch the kingdom. Capital L. Then lowercase for launch L A. U N C H the that's capital T H E kingdom with the capital K the rest is lowercase La dollar sign launch the kingdom and partner with us to really be a beacon of light and hope unto others and to be a vessel and a vehicle to launch ministries that they can do what thus said the Lord please reach out to us if you call me and I don't answer your phone shoot me a text message something might be wrong with my voicemail and I may not get your call so, Brother Chris, we only have a few seconds left. Please bless uh, us. Okay. <laughs> All right. I'm going to read Timothy 5, 20 through uh, to the end. Tell those who keep on sitting if they are wrong. This front of the whole church so that the others won't have a weapon before God and uh, Jesus Christ. And the chosen angels, I command you to do these things. Be careful to do them without showing favor to anyone. Think carefully before you lay your hands on anyone for Lord's service. Do not share in the sins of others. Keep yourself pure. Timothy, you stop drinking only water, drink little wine. This will help your stomach, and you will not be sick so often. The sins of some people are easy to see even before they are judged, but the sins of others are seen only later. So all also, good deeds are easy to see, but even when they are not easy to see, they cannot stay hidden. Bless the Lord. Ladies and gentlemen, what we've just witnessed is not church as usual. I'm so pleased to be the senior pastor. For years, we've operated under Keep It Real Worldwide Ministries, and that ministry will continue to move on and do the work of the Lord. But our new corporate covering will be Kingdom Builder Ministries. And that ministry, the primary focus is to house all of your ministries, all of you that are called to such a time as this, to be a pastor, to be an evangelist, to be a teacher, to be a person of great faith. We would like to partner with you and bring you into the fold. If you don't have a church home already, please consider partnering with us. Please consider being a faith partner as well that the work of the Lord can go on. I am Pastor Sonny James, Senior Pastor of this ministry. I wanna thank God for each and every one of you who've chosen to participate with us. I pray your blessings. I pray God's speed be upon you. And I pray that God launch you into your destiny. Remember, you are the absolute best that God has to offer. Don't get it twisted. Shortcake. Shortcake. God bless you. We love you in Christ. Have a blessed day, a blessed week, a blessed month, a blessed life. Now we have, uh, Sister Riddle, are you still with us? Hey, amen. Well, that's all right. You, well, that's all right. Those that you guys are already there. I just want to encourage those that that were able to stay on great, those that weren't great. We got uh, Brother Donald Collins called in from the hospital, bless the Lord, and he were, was able to bless us in word. That was so encouraging for a man to be laid up in the hospital preparing for surgery and still find it in himself wow. to be put on the spot. 
and to proclaim his love for Christ. Amen. And then uh, Chris, Christopher Taylor, one of one of my new sons in the gospel, uh, who I'm so excited the day is going to come when they're going to share some of the Jewish uh, philosophies and things of that nature. And uh, for him to dial in and say, nope, I'm pressing through. I need to get in and participate Amen. live. Hallelujah. I mean, God is so good. Uh, and then and then as we're getting ready to close out, Sister Riddle uh, is, is commissioned to do our benediction. And then all of a sudden, she chimes back in and says, hey, pastor, we're just now getting in. Well, see, you got in where you fit in. <laughs> you got in in God's timing. Amen. You see, and that's what it's all about today, guys. Have a repentant heart and then do what thus say the Lord. But understand why you're doing what you're doing, that you can be effective in all that he has you to do. Get a purpose. Get a plan together. Design a plan to help yourself be more effective in your call. Amen? Amen. Pe people of faith, be encouraged today. I'm so grateful that Minister Rice pressed through his challenges. I'm so grateful that many of you pressed through your challenges. And I'm so grateful that my wife puts up with me. To God be the glory. We're going to have um, Sister Michelle Riddle to close us in our benediction. Just remember, I'm asking for faith partners to come with us as we go on and move to the next phase. We will move into our new building officially. Our official launch will be the first Sunday in July where we will have communion service again and we will bless the house of God. Our first live service will be in the building, will be July 5th. Now, prior to that, we may, um, Chris Taylor, Chris and Nick actually gave me a great suggestion, which that is phenomenal. Uh, next Sunday, we may actually um, have the service in the parking lot so that we can still observe social distancing and, and that I can stay clear of everybody <laughs> for just a little while longer. But then we will let the Lord direct us when we go from there. So I want to be faithful. Uh, thank God for Deacon McCrary also for speaking life into me. And I thank God for Sister Riddle who also God used to encourage me. So thank God for all of you. And so our first service in our new building will be Sunday, July 5th. So get healthy. Be well, everybody, because on that day, we're going to celebrate the Lord like never before. And until then, we will continue to have our services online, live, so that folks can come in and um, participate with us and on the cell phone. God bless you all so much. I'm believing God for miracles and I'm believing God for you. I thank God for each and every one of you. Call me, reach out to us, and please be faithful in your giving. Go to our cash app fundraiser, which is the dollar sign, launch the kingdom. Please be faithful. Support the work of the Lord that we can be faithful to those that need it. I wanna also give a brief report before we go to benediction that all of our youth that are committed to this ministry, we've been blessing them with just a little post-school, post-pandemic little blessing. So those of you who are still committed to this ministry and you have not been blessed by your ministry, I want you to reach out to us right away so that we can bless you with a little something just to kick off your end of year, beginning of your summer. And um, we also want to thank God for uh, Mother Stewart and uh, being able to be a blessing unto her uh, with her air conditioning unit. And we just thank God for being able to participate in that. I want to announce that uh, this ministry also is looking forward to uh, little Caitlin Riddle, who's uh, going to be participating in a uh, local, regional, and prayerfully national uh, program 
that is designed to encourage young people to help them strengthen their self-identity and self-awareness, give them a little competition, but really the focus is to make them better, confident, more socially equipped and adapt human beings. And this ministry will be blessing uh, uh, little Miss Caitlin Riddle to be able to further um, her efforts to go to that pageant and to enjoy what I believe God is calling her to do. So we want to be a blessing to the people of God. We want to be a blessing to you. So please give and give abundantly that we might be a blessing in its abundance. God bless you all. Again, this is Pastor Sonny James, my wife, Kirsten James, and we love you in Christ. The benediction followed by a goodbye. God bless. The benediction comes from Jesus Christ, the Son of Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling, and to present you to fallen before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and ever. Let the church say amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Again, thank you all for participating in this service. Please come and support our ministry. Please be faithful. Please love the Lord thy God with all thy might and all thy heart and all thy mind. God loves you. He loved you first. Don't get it twisted. Shortcake. God bless you. Be well. Peace. Love you all. Be safe. Love you all. Be safe. Love you.